All of the machine work has been completed on the crankcase, all of the time certs have been installed. Now we have to do our final preparations for reassembly. So I'm going to start with a bearing scraper and often when you get a case back from a machine shop it will be machine shop clean but that doesn't mean that it's ready for reassemble. We've got some burring where they have rebored the main tunnel for us so I'm going to take my bearing scraper and I'm just going to run it around the edge and this is going to deburr the, the case. I want to be careful that I don't scratch the actual bearing surfaces, but all I want to do is remove that burr so we should have no other marks inside the case. Once we've got all of our main bearings scraped, we're going to check all of the other surface areas that have been rebored. So in this case, whenever it's closed and honed, the intermediate shaft is also has to be rebored and we've got the same burring on the intermediate shaft areas. Also on the oil pump area here, this area too also needs to be deburred as it's been lowered to accommodate for the crankcase being shortened. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape these as well. Once you finish with this side of the case, we're going to do the opposite side, the same thing. We're going to deburr all of the main bearing journal surfaces, the intermediate shaft surfaces, and the oil pump surfaces in this case. And it's exactly the same. We're just going to scrape that burr right off. Now I've got all my edges deburred. I'm going to unlock my stand. I'm just going to rotate this over and dump out some of these shavings. And now we're going to move through and get ready for, for reassembly. By now you should have already done all of your hole checks, but it's a good idea to have a final look over. Make sure there's all the threads are in good shape. We've got all the little hold down points here. We can see our time certs have been installed for the head studs. We are ready for our timing cover cases. We've resurfaced the gasket area on here so this is flat and ready to take the studs back again. So if everything is clean and there's no more machining, no more tapping required, no more thread repairs, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our final clean. What I'm going to use for a final clean is I'm going to be pushing a multi-purpose solvent through everything, particularly through all of the oil galleries, and then I'm going to be flushing it all out with compressed air. Once you get a crankcase back from the machine shop or you do the machine work yourself, you want to make sure that all of the remnants of machining is out. So for this cleaning, I'm just going to come in on each one of these oil galleries for the main jets and I'm just going to soak them with cleaner through each one of it, making sure that I'm running through. And we should have solvent coming out of different areas in the case throughout the oil galleries. So I want to make sure that I've got good solvent flow wherever I go. Then for the larger holes, I'm going to use my bottle brush just to make sure that there's no remnants. I'll put a little bit of cleaning solvent down, push the brush all the way through and back out. Just to make sure that each hole, if there's anything stuck to it, that the uh, brush is going to push it out. All right, once I'm done with all of my oil galleries that I can get into. 
I'm just going to go ahead and hose the whole case through. Roll it over and I want to make sure that I get all of my threaded areas. I don't want any oils or any machining byproducts left on anything. I'm going to come down through the main oil gallery, which is the thermostat housing. And when I do, we've got fluid coming out the other side of the case, indicating that I've got a clear passage through here. Okay, once I've gone ahead and washed everything out, I'm going to dry the case off with compressed air. Making sure that you're wearing your safety glasses. You want to also make sure that all of the oil passageways have compressed air put through them. And then any areas you see that need more cleaning, like we can see right here, we've got remnants of cutting oil coming out of these. Just go ahead and work those areas. You want to make sure that all the threads are clean throughout all of the fasteners. You want to make sure too that the head stud areas are also cleaned out with compressed air. Okay, once you're finished with this side of the case, we're going to repeat the same procedure on the other half of the case. Now we've got our case cleaned out, we're going to go ahead and perform a technical service bulletin. Porsche discovered that this fitting right here, inside the casting, they've inlaid a steel pipe. This is the main oil galley that flows up on the bottom side of the thermostat assembly. And what we are going to do is we're going to take a silicone 732 is what Porsche recommends to use. And we're going to seal this surface here and also inside here. Now what happens if you don't do that, there's a possibility that oil will weep out of these areas both inside and outside. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that before we go any further. So we're just going to go ahead and fill this area. On both sides. And then I'm just going to use my finger dipped in a little water so the silicone won't stick to me just to smooth that. And make it look clean and tidy. Now that we've sealed up our possible leak point, we are going to reinstall our windage trays in both cases. So to install the windage tray, the windage trays were only used from 1965 to 1971 
from 1972 and on they were deleted. We're going to go ahead and continue to use them at this point. So to install them, we're just going to slide them through the drain back holes. And then we're going to bend the little metal tabs around the case to hold it in place. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do it on the second case half as well. Next, I'm going to install our main bearings. I've already gone ahead and installed our two locating dowels, and these are just a press fit. So you just press them down with your thumb, and then if you have to, using the back of a screwdriver, tap them in. When we're installing our bearings, we want to install it with the tab into the locating tab on the actual saddle. So I'll start, I'll put the bearing in so the tab is located and I'll put my finger on the top of it just to hold it. And then I'll press it down with my thumb. Now when you press it down, you will feel that the bearing is slightly proud or slightly above this, this mating surface. This is because when the bearings are brought together, so if we have another bearing, in the actual crankcase it applies what's called bearing crush and this seats the bearing into this ball. The other thing you want to make sure is that your oil lubrication hole lines up with the lubrication hole on the crankcase. So we're just going to go ahead and install all of our main bearings and now our thrust bearing at the end. The thrust bearings can be a little bit tougher to install because of the thrust and sometimes to lock them down if you use the back of a screwdriver to lightly seat the bearing you want to make sure the bearing is all the way down and is not sitting up in any way and that the amount of lip or gap sitting proud is about the same on either side of the bearing. Now that the main bearings have been installed, we're going to go ahead and install our intermediate shaft bearings. These are going to install in exactly the same fashion as the main bearing. We want to make sure that the lubrication holes line up with the lubrication holes in the crankcase. And we want to also place the bearing tang into the slot first and press it down. Once again, if you need to seat the bearing, just use the back of your screwdriver and just be nice and careful as you attach it. And we're going to do the same for the thrust bearing on our intermediate shaft. Okay, once again, we just want to feel it, make sure that if there's any part of the bearing that's sitting up that it's about equal on both sides. Is we're going to install our locating pin, and this is for the number 8 bearing, and that's just going to press into the case. Now, I'm going to go ahead and install the bearings on the other case half, and then it will be ready for reassembly. <laughs>